Davy PhD's Jargon Busters, episode 4, 14th October 2020. If you watch the news, it's full of terms like GDP, OECD, IMF, ERM, and usually they're delivered by doer news presenters as bad, bad news. But what do all these terms really mean? And is the news really as bad as it sounds? In these videos, I'm going to bust the jargon and explain these things in terms we can all understand. Tonight's jargon is the Barnett Formula and Barnett Consequentials. The Barnett Formula is a mechanism used by the UK Treasury to automatically adjust the amounts of public expenditure allocated to devolved governments to reflect changes in spending levels allocated to the same public services in England, England and Wales, or Great Britain as appropriate. Obviously, the devolved governments don't have their own separate taxation agencies, so the HMRC collects taxes from individuals and corporations in the devolved nations on behalf of the UK Treasury. As the devolved governments need funding for their devolved programmes, taxes collected are split between the UK government and the, rele and the relevant devolved government. In the case of Scotland, which has the most wide-ranging powers of the devolved governments, we generally receive just over half of that money for our annual government expenditure. When there is a UK spending review and spending on a certain area is increased, then a calculation is needed to see how much it will also increase in the devolved governments. So the Barnett formula is applied to the English figure with devolved variables factored in. Any monies awarded are called a Barnett consequential. So let's say there was a government program and it was going to generate some additional funding for England. We would take Scotland's population as a percentage of England and multiply that by the additional cash. We would then multiply that figure by the percentage of budgetary control devolved to Scotland. And this would equal Scotland's additional funding, also known as a Barnet Consequential. Now we'll work through a few examples. If one billion additional pounds was being given to a programme in England, with 9.8% of England's population, and we had 100% of budgetary control devolved, we would end up with £98 million. Pounds. However, a similar programme with 60% budgetary control awarded to Scotland would give us £59 million. Pounds. Same amount, same population, but 0% of budgetary control would result in zero money coming to Scotland, as you would expect. This aims to give each country the same pounds per person change in funding as the change in funding for comparable government services in England. Then, based on that calculation, the devolved government receives an increased, increased block grant back from the UK Treasury with which to fund the expenditure it is responsible for under devolution. <clears throat> this block grant is not in any way based on the needs of or on the levels of revenue generated in the devolved administration. For example, Education is 100% devolved in Scotland, so the comparability factor is 100%. In defence spending, where Westminster makes all the decisions, the comparability factor is zero. So I hear you ask, can it be used to cheat us? Well, it can be used to do just that. Take health spending as one example. The UK government announced plans in 2017 to increase spending on the NHS by an average of 3.4% in every year for a five-year period starting in 2018 and ending in 2023. As health spending is almost totally devolved, this would result in a Barnet consequential. When the health spending started, the first year was 1819. The NHS England budget was £114.6 billion. 
The 3.4% increase amounted to £3.9 billion. The NHS Scotland budget was £13.11 billion. Now, Scotland is in 99.4% financial control. If we multiply that by the 3.4%, we get a figure of £381 million. However, if we got the full 3.4% increase England got, we should have got £450 million. And the difference between those two is £69 million. In the year 19 to 20, the Barnet increase was 394 million. The full 3.4% should have been 460, and the difference is 66 million. In 2021, it will be 408 million. The full 3.4 will be 480, and the difference is 72 million. In 21 22, the Barnet increase will be 422 million. 3.4% would actually be 490 million. And the difference is 68 million. And in the final year, 22 23, the Barnet increase will be 436 million. The full 3.4% will be 510, and the difference is 74. Throughout the whole programme, Scots health spending will increase by 2.041 billion, but the, if we're given the full 3.4%, we should have 2.39 billion. That's a difference of 349 million pounds or 2% less of an increase throughout the five years than England. As you can see, the Barnett formula doesn't pass on the full 3.4%. In fact, over the five year period, the cumulative increase in Scotland's budget under the Barnett formula is 2.041 billion. But if the English percentage increase was applied, the cumulative budget improvement would have been 2.39 billion. A whole 349 million higher across the five years. So let's be clear, the Barnett formula means in the budget areas where it applied, spending in Scotland is reduced on a percentage basis in comparison to increases received in England. But how does this happen? Well, in this example, the 0.6% of Scottish Health Service funding that the UK government pays for isn't included in the UK spending review as it isn't spent in England. And as the 0.6% isn't part of the block grant, it can't have a Barnet consequential awarded to it. This is known as the Barnet squeeze and proves that the Barnet formula has a built-in mechanism to lower Scottish government spending until it reaches parity with England. In Davy PhD's humble opinion, doesn't it seem a bit dishonest to devise a formula to cut vital health spending and then tell the Scottish people that the formula is a boost or a bonus to their nation which they can't afford to live without? The Barnett formula has the same impact across many of Scotland's most important spending areas. But let's finish by considering the real world impact to Scotland's health spending by illustrating what the missing £349 million of budget increases denied Scotland's NHS across those five years could pay for. If Scotland were to have received the full 3.4% increase as England did, then looking at the average salary ranges published in April 2019 for medical staff, the Scottish NHS would have been able to hire 972 new GPs in 2018-19, 3,756 healthcare assistants in 2019-20, 750 additional consultant doctors in 2021, 1,447 nurse consultants in 21-22 and 1,030 consultant paramedics in 22-23. So only looking at one area of many devolved expenditure areas, the Barnett formula will withhold from Scotland over the five years covered by the spending review enough money to have hired approximately 7,955 additional NHS medical professionals. Keep in mind that this difference was achieved with the UK government retaining responsibility for just 0.6% of Scottish NHS spending. So the Barnett formula is not a bonus. It's not a gift. It's a smoke and mirror mechanism that aims to reduce the Scottish government's spending powers in real terms. So the next time you're watching 
Parliament on the television and you see Boris Johnson or Rishi Sunak talking about giving us Barnet consequentials, don't be fooled into thinking it's some kind of benevolent gift. Because the chances are they're actually stealing from us. Well, folks, that's it for the Barnet formula. If there's another term you hear, or three, four, or even five letter abbreviation that you hear driving you nuts, let me know and I'll bust it. Otherwise, I'd ask you all to comment on the Facebook page and play nicely. Unionists are welcome here, as are their dissenting opinions, as long as they play nicely too. Davy PhD.